Hello everyone, this is Brad Tallis from Autodesk. I uh, wanted to welcome you to another Fusion 360 Live. Uh, we're doing a CAD Hangout with one of our customers, uh, Blaze Barrett. Actually, he's, he's that way. <laughs> so Blaze, welcome. Um, so really quick for everybody, I, I got to, you'll notice, you might recognize Blaze um, attends quite a few of our live streams and has been helping out the community quite a bit. And I saw some of the stuff that he's been working on a Fusion 360 and I'm like I gotta get this guy onto one of these live streams and so what this is basically gonna be is a, a show and tell. Blaze is gonna show off some of the amazing stuff he's been doing with Fusion. I'm blown away. I hope you all all will be blown away with what he's been doing. So Blaze why don't you introduce yourself kind of give us a, a quick you know who are you what's your background and then we'll dive right in okay. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, having me. It's an amazing honor, really, for me to uh, be here. I've watched every single one of uh, your lives. So to be here is, uh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm from uh, Quebec, Canada. My first language is French, and my English might be a bit rusty. So, uh, Brad, you'll help me if uh, <laughs> I'm looking for words. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not an engineer uh, and nothing like that. Um, my work uh, was uh, primarily a web uh, programmer, web uh, developer. Um, so I know a bit about uh, programmation, uh, pro programming. Um, but I've always been pretty good at making stuff. And uh, well, I'll tell you uh, how I actually uh, how I found Fusion is I built my own CNC uh, a couple of years back, about five years ago, six years ago, and um, I built it, and then I didn't know how to use it. I had no idea how to make G code, or so um, I looked uh, online uh, to find uh, software that could generate G code and help me, and this is how I found uh, Fusion. And uh, since then, I mean, my it's, it's just it expanded so much. All the things that I can do, you know, I've discovered the, the digital way of making stuff, and uh, it's literally changed my life. Yeah, that's actually the the CNC that you're talking about is what piqued my interest because I actually have done the same thing. I, I built my own CNC machine in the garage, and right. when you showed what you were doing with it, not only that you built 
you used fusion to help build it, but now you're building parts with it with fusion. I, I wanted I wanted to see more about that. So if you don't mind, Blaze, I, I think everybody wants to kind of see what you've been working on. If if you don't mind sharing your screen and kind of showing off and talking about how you yeah. how you designed it, you know, how you used fusion, all that kind of stuff. And I'll probably sit sure. back and I've, uh, I, I, you know, I've done hundreds of projects in the last maybe six years or so with Fusion, and I picked uh, um, projects projects that will, sh I think, will show a bit how versatile uh, uh, software Fusion is. So, um, and we'll start. Uh, I'll start by sharing. I'll share my screen right away. There we go. You can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so this is um, a do-it-yourself CNC. I am currently designing. This is not the CNC I have um, right now. Uh, the CNC I have right now has some pretty bad design flaws. Um, it was not designed with Fusion uh, because I didn't know Fusion at the time, and um, and I gathered parts uh, over the years, and I have all the parts to make this new CNC. So this is uh, a project I'm working on. This is, will be my next uh, CNC. Um, to give you a sense of scale, this is a four by eight uh, area here. And it will have a tool changer, tool, 10 uh, tool, uh, tools in the carousel, which will, sh will be um, fixed to the gantry and it'll pivot in and out. Um, but uh, before I uh, wanted to start uh, the uh, mechanical side of uh, the CNC, I wanted uh, to work on the electronics side of it, make sure that I can get all the electronics right before um, moving on to the uh, mechanical side of it. Uh, and one big part of this is uh, the control panel. Um, so um, I'm going to move on to the next project. Uh, I have a lot to show, so you know it'll be uh, I'll be <laughs> it'll be a bit of a marathon. Okay, so uh, this is um, like my bench uh, control panel, just to test things out. Um, and it has all of the main uh, controls that you would want to have uh, on the on the CNC. Oh no, my trackpad just lost connection. Fortunately, I have a, a mouse. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, uh, my uh, th this is the control panel I've been uh, working on. Um, and it's working great, actually. And making this, uh, in the process of making this control panel, uh, Fusion Electronics just came out pretty much at the same time. And I thought that was the perfect uh, project to uh, get acquainted with uh, Fusion Electronics. So I designed this uh, this PCB here. Uh, actually, I'll just stop the sharing for a second. Um, wow. And uh, I can't see myself right yeah, now. You're fine. So, we can see. Yep. Uh, just a second. Just a second. So, OK, good. Right. So I designed this, uh, this PCB here. And this is uh, actually an ESP32. It's sort of a kind of an Arduino, but a bit more powerful. I, uh, I've discovered these uh, maybe a year back, and I've been using them a lot. So I had this PCB made. Um, okay, back to screen sharing. So you used Fusion's ECAD capabilities to actually like that's create, right create that board, and then you had that board manufactured. That's right. That's wow. right. Um, and I mean, it, it took you about a, a week to get uh, here from the moment I ordered it. So it's super fast, very impressive, and the quality is great. Uh, but still, um, I'll show you some. Uh, uh, okay, just just quickly, I've drawn the uh, these uh, wires. That's because I want to. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of making a, an instructables. Uh, so I, I needed the, the, the nice render, uh, so that's why I drew all these uh, these uh, wires. You can that's see amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah. And this here is um, the actual control panel on my bench. Uh, as you can see, the servo motor, uh, the drive, and uh, the control, and everything. The power supply. <laughs> it's all. Uh, <laughs> it looks very messy, but it, uh, it's working, which is. Uh, 
what I want to know. I'll bet anyway. you everybody watching is geeking out just looking at your uh, workshop and stuff like that. So a couple quick questions for you. So you have a, a cool little display. Is that just like a decal? Is that how you did that? For the oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've, but it's a decal of the real um, actual, you know, information that I have on my LCD. So it, it's pretty much uh, it's how it looks in the real life. You have your DROs here and the, the jug. Um, status and feed rate override, speed, uh, spindle cool. speed override, and so on. Yeah. OK, so um, as I was saying, um, I'm, um, I'm pretty new to electronics. And this was my first PCB, actually. And I mean, Fusion, it just blew my mind how easy it was. Uh, of course, I've watched all the um, Edwin's and Jorge's uh, live streams and quick tips and so on, which uh, made it very easy for me. So I um, I designed this first PCB, but even a week for me, uh, uh, you know, I like to be, first, I like to be able to uh, make stuff myself. And um, I, and I, I wanted, to, I, I looked around on the net uh, to find if there was a solution um, to uh, make PCBs, engrave PCBs, like a small P uh, CNC machine. And I found this uh, this uh, CNC project on GitHub, um, which is called the uh, Cyclone PCB Factory, uh, which is a very small uh, CNC. I can show it to you uh, right here. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I uh, I but I I modified it quite a lot. I, I the table uh, was like um, you could only engrave a single um, size of PCB. So I made it so that you could, you know, you could, it could accommodate any type of uh, any size uh, PCB. And um, I made like tool holder and this little control panel and a place to tuck away the power cord and stuff like that. But the thing uh, which is um, most interesting about this project is that I created uh, the control, uh, the controller for the CNC with the that CNC. So it was, I had all the parts on a breadboard, and um, and while it was on a breadboard for testing, I engraved the PCB that would make the controller for that same. <laughs> CNC. <laughs> machines and making it, machines. That's pretty cool. So yeah. yeah. So you had like all the wires running to the CNC machine off of a breadboard, and so it was actually running, and you were sending G code to it, and it was actually drilling the holes and etching the. That's board. right. That's <laughs> right. That's incredible. I can show you here the the control the, the, the controller. Uh, just a quick video of the oh, wow. what it looked like uh, once. Uh... So that machine cut those traces on that yep. board. Wow. That's right. That's yep. Right. There's the stepper drivers. Those three heat sink things are the stepper yep. drivers. Yeah. There. Yep. Um, I have this uh, little video. Uh, some of you might have seen it on uh, the Facebook group uh, Fusion 360 users. I'll just play it now. Just uh, put the volume down a bit. Uh, no, that's another one. This one here. <laughs> yep, looks just like it. <laughs> cool, fly through. And that's the actual machine. Wow. Now I want one of these. <laughs> That's really cool. Huh. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, and I've noticed you you actually added looks like you added like slider joints and motion and all that kind of stuff so the machine would work in yeah. CAD just like it does in real life, which is pretty neat. So Yeah, that's right. Um, so 
So Blaze, I got a question from Peter Stimple. He was actually asking, how did you create the cables on the on the uh, controller board? How did you create those cables to look realistic like you did? Well, you, you'd have to watch one of uh, Brad's live. I just uh, <laughs> I followed Brad's instructions <laughs> to the letter. And it, <laughs> it went perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have per, you know cable routing per se, but you can you can create splines. And now that we've added that three D spline functionality, it makes it even easier. In fact, I probably should yeah. do a, an updated uh, version of that. But yeah. So Peter, that's how uh, he went about doing that. Is just basically routing splines and then doing a sweep along those splines. So. Yeah. Great question. Thank you for asking that, Peter. Yeah, great question. OK, um, moving on, uh, I'd like to uh, show you quickly. We'll go into uh, we'll move into uh, the uh, electronic um, side of things. I'll show you uh, the. Um, why is it not uh, moving? OK, there we go. So we are now in the electronics uh, environment of Fusion, and this is the control panel for that for that CNC. Um, my mouse is uh, not responding so well. Okay. Oh no. I think you closed it. Yeah. Yeah, I closed it. <laughs> I have trouble with my mouse. Oh, my trackpad is back. So sorry about that. Um, okay, so we uh, the the control um, um, is gone. I, I closed it unfortunately, but uh, still, um, of course, the stuff like that, that has to happen <laughs> in live streams. No uh, but that really doesn't matter because uh, I had, uh, I thought I'd show um, uh, my workflow uh, from uh, making um, a schematic all the way down to uh, having the toolpath. It, it'll take about seven minutes or so. Is that okay? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. I think everybody'd be interested in seeing how you did this. And the thing I love, go ahead and bring that up, and I'll, I'll sit here and talk for a little bit. The thing sure. that I love about this is not only are you creating the parts for the CNC machine, the fact that you're actually creating the board and you're using Fusion for pretty much everything, including the renderings, including the cabling, including the eCAD. That's right. Know, generating the G code. I mean, all in one tool. That's what I I think is just amazing. So. Yeah, I absolutely agree. OK, so now we're in uh, the electronic uh, environment. Um, I just uh, created a new schematic. Um, and now we I'm going to add parts. And uh, for this, you'll have to uh, watch uh, Edwin's and Jorge's uh, live streams, how to create libraries. I'm not going to show that, but that, that would take way too long. But I created this uh, library. And in there, I have uh, boards like Arduinos and uh, the uh, ESP32. Um, like this is the, the these here are the little um, uh, stepper motor drivers, uh, ESP32. I even have uh, this uh, LCD I use a lot in my projects. Um, so let's load the ESP32. I'll put it here in, uh, and then press Escape. Get the LCD, rotate it a couple of times. There you go. And uh, now I'll just uh, are on my keyboard and quickly uh, do some routing. Ground, 5 volts. Oops. OK. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> OK. Uh, now, these uh, routing I'm doing right now, uh, this is not how you would uh, connect an LCD, this LCD to um, ESP32. It would not work, so don't try this at home. It's just for uh, show purposes, OK? <laughs> so now uh, we, uh, we have our schematic all uh, ready. This is the simplest schematic uh, we could uh, do. We'll switch to the 2D PCB environment. I have my PCB here, and this is uh, the LCD. I'll just drop in here. And you see that the LCD already makes its uh, uh, support holes, the, the, the mounting holes, automatically. And it has these uh, red uh, area uh, when auto-routing, so that the, because the, the LCD has standoffs that uh, are um, on the, the actual PCB, you know, there. So 
I don't want it to uh, rub against the uh, traces. So, so these are keep, keep clear around. areas or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's right. And this is our uh, ESP32. I'll just rotate it like that. And now they're both on the top side, which is not possible. So I'll just pull, put the, the uh, ESP32 on the bottom side of, um, of the board. There you go. Now we might try to um, redimension. Uh, I notice probably because of the the, the, the zoom, it's it's a little slower, slower. yeah, because we're pushing <clears throat> through Zoom and then into YouTube through OBS. Yeah, <laughs> we're breaking right. down the internet. Okay, so uh, now this would be our two um, D PCB. Um, we we're ready for uh, routing, so I'll just hit the auto route button. And I want all of my traces on uh, the, the top side of the LCD. So I'll just um, disable the bottom side. And we'll go uh, effort high, because why not? It's just so fast. So continue, start, and check this out. Boom. Wow. It's routed. But these traces are way too thin for my uh, milling machine. Uh, you know, it, it, they would break. So I need my traces to be way thicker. Uh, so what I did, I hope uh, Edwin and Jorge are not like, oh my God, <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> because uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but <clears throat> so far it's been working for me. Uh, in the DRC rules, uh, you have all these, uh, you know, for a thickness of the traces and uh, your, the vias and so on. Uh, you, you can set all that up in there. Uh, I've tuned it, tried different things, and you can you can save these uh, these settings. So uh, I'm going to load this one here, select it, and now you've seen. I don't know if you've noticed, but the the, the pads are already thicker. But uh, I have to go back into design, rip up uh, the actual traces so that we can reroute them again. And I'll just say continue, start, and check this out. Wow. Boom. Yes. And these traces I can uh, yeah. uh, I can mill with my machine. So now uh, we're ready to switch uh, to the uh, 3D. Um, well, and you can even see in that how it went around those keep out areas for those yeah, red yeah, areas. That's right. yeah, that was that's yeah. pretty cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, it's loading right now. This is going to take a few uh, a few seconds. It's a few seconds. What's a few seconds? I mean, <laughs> to make something that cool. Well, so well, now it's taking that schematic and actually physically building the three D three D PCB. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's slower than usual. I, I can really uh, see that. The, normally, uh, it would already be. I hope it's not going to take too long. Yeah. But it's working. It's working. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you heard Blaze mentioned um, Edwin and Jorge, they have um, a live stream series also where they go through pretty much step by step, you know, how to create a board, how to create traces, how to import libraries and stuff. If any of you are interested in the, the ECAD side of things, definitely look on our Fusion 360 live YouTube channel for those live streams because they're incredible, very, very, very smart guys. Um, and uh, I did a quick live stream, a one hour live stream. I basically regurgit regurgitated what they told me. So um, I highly recommend that. Okay, cool. We see the board now. Yeah, we see the board and you see the ESP32 ESP is all in 3D. Uh, I mean, this is amazing. It's so fast, you know, to, uh, I, I, I'm just uh, astounded by uh, how fantastic this thing is. You can see here the traces moving around the the, the standoffs of the LCD. Yeah, and it even drilled the holes through the LED. Yeah, for the display yeah that's right. Wow. For the mounting of uh, hmm. of my LCD. And if I turn off the packages, the, the, the SP32 and the, the LCD, we can see the board. Um, and I told you I wanted to take this all the way to um, um, making the tool pass. So, uh, we won't need uh, these pads. I'll turn them off. Uh, uh, we won't need the solder mask. Um, if I open this, we can hide um, the little screen. So we're left with pretty much just what I would actually uh, need to uh, 
go to the toolpath. And check this out, Brad. I don't know if you knew that, but I'm in the 3D PCB environment, still in the PCB, uh, and I quit, can switch <laughs> straight to manufacture yeah. right from here. Wow. <laughs> yep. I, I mean, this is mind blowing. Um, I'm going to create a new setup. This will take about a, a second or so. Here we go. Uh, I'll place my work offset right here. Um, and now, uh, okay, my model will be um, this body here. So model the board itself and the stock uh, will be relative size uh, uh, with no additional stock. There you go. This is, that's it for the setup. That's all we need. Um, we'll need the copper traces. But still, now we have to generate and create toolpaths. I uh, created a template for milling PCBs. So there you go. I have my toolpath. If I generate this, all my holes are picked already. <laughs> and now uh, this one here, um, there's a little work, but it's not that bad. Uh, we have to um, pick every traces and pads, but I mean, um, oops, cancel. Yeah. And for, for those of you that, um, I, you saw blaze do it. He had a template and I forgot to mention Angelo is helping us out today. He's on the, the keyboards and stuff like that. Um, this is probably one of his favorite commands is templates because if you're doing repetitive things over and over again, kind of like what blaze is doing with circuit boards, you, you can have tools, you can have, um, you know, different kinds of tool paths created as templates, and then you can apply that to any part or any design, and it basically knows the feeds and speeds, the tools, the the offsets, all that kind of stuff. So um, maybe in a future uh, future live stream, I'll bug Angelo to, to talk about that a little bit more in depth, so. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, we have uh, our tool pass. We're ready uh, to simulate. So I'll hit simulate here and um, press play. And there we go. Drilling all the holes. And I'll just skip the holes so we can see the tracing. So this is G code ready to send to uh, <laughs> to the that little uh, CNC I, uh, I have. This is so cool. I mean, actually, again, I have the CNC with me right here. To, to reiterate that, I mean, all in one tool, and that, yeah, you send it to that little guy, and he's cutting parts on your desk within a few minutes of coming up with the design. Yeah. And you're not having to ship this out and have it, you know, wait a week or two weeks or whatever it was, yeah. which actually isn't that long of a time. But the fact that you can do this yourself, that's I'm, I'm geeking out over this. That's really, really cool. I know, I know. Of course, there, you know, there would be very simple PCBs and. Um, you know, I still have to tune some things, but still, I, I get some pretty nice uh, prototype uh, PCBs uh, already uh, with this little machine, which has uh, like a, a few hours uh, turnaround. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, now we've talked about uh, the PCB. Um, now, um, I'm, this is CAM, um, this is uh, manufacturing, and this is what I do uh, for a living. Um, I, I made my own CNC. I learned how to use uh, CNCs, uh, and um, there's a little uh, shop in uh, in my hometown um, that work uh, mainly aluminum, aluminum, and uh, I, uh, I gave them my CV, and um, I got the job. This is... I got this job because of Fusion, really, and I love my job. So what I do at work is uh, I, I, uh, I do um, mainly uh, um, snowmobile parts and also side-by-side -side parts. Um, I, I've got a few of them uh, here. Maybe I should uh, yeah, stop so sharing my stop screen sharing for so a second. Can you uh, start sharing the screen, I mean? Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. But I will stop sharing the screen. Yep. Okay, now you see me. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here I am. Okay. 
I'm sorry. I'm new to uh, to Zoom, so. <laughs> You're doing okay. awesome, Blaze. Trust me. I'm, I hope everybody else online is geeking out as much as I am. So this is really cool. Oh wow. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah. So all of these parts I machined um, at, at at my job. Um, this these are like rear wheels uh, for a snow, snowmobile, and there are quite a few parts. This is an assembly. So uh, there's this is a part. This one is a part as well. Uh, this, of course, is a is a part. This and this, these are are all are all assembled. And I, the 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 shaft part, I make two of them in one cycle. You know, when I press start, I get two full um, uh, shaft assembly uh, with a TM1P uh, from Has is one of their smaller models. So I, you know, I had to be pretty inventive on how to. Uh, to accomplish that. This is not a five axis or anything like that. Um, I'll show you some other parts. This is uh, to, to start the snowmobile. Wow. And these are design infusion? Yeah, design infusion. And um, I, uh, I make four, I think, of these uh, each cycle. I wish I could see Angelo's screen right now. He's probably geeking out too, <laughs> seeing all the <laughs> manufactured parts. So, oh wow, this is a simpler part, but I, I managed to do it in two operations. I make I uh, think uh, four of them at a time, or yeah. Uh, and it looks like there's like texture on the bottom side of it. How, how did you do that? Is that? Oh, it's just an engraving tool. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. Man. You can see the logo here. Yeah. Um, this is uh, more of a. An assembly, uh, you have like a, um, uh, anyway, you, you have some uh, accessories that would hook here and you can lock them. Uh, but I, you know, I, I have some plastic parts and metal parts and they're all, I try uh, when I make an assembly to uh, um, make every part of the assembly as much as possible in one cycle. Um, and this here is uh, the latest project I've been working on. These are for uh, side by side. Um, you see, there are two different models. They have uh, different uh, uh, ID um, yep. inner diameters. This is 1.75. This is two inches. And um, just put that one back here. And again, this is an assembly. You see, there are two parts. Let's say this is the base, and this would be the collet, I, I'd say. And uh, it uh, it fits with uh, these uh, adapter plates, uh, which to which you would uh, hook, let's say, like a a chainsaw uh, holder or a fuel tank, uh, you know, the accessories. So you, you have these um, clamped to your uh, side by side tubing and. You, you can place, mm, hook uh, all sorts of uh, accessories. Cool. And uh, mm -hmm. my boss gave me permission to uh, show you uh, the setup, uh, how I make these. I make <clears throat> both uh, parts in uh, one uh, in one cycle, finished parts. This one here has uh, the base has five operation. And uh, the the collet have has uh, three three operation in one cycle. And I, so this is the next uh, project I'll show you. I'll go back to uh, screen sharing. Is this working? Yes. Yep. We can see your screen. Okay. Excellent. So uh, this is the setup. Oh, wow. We call this a production plate. Um, and you can see that I like this is the uh, the in, uh, inner di one point seventy five uh, inner diameter, and these are the two uh, two inches diameter. So on the same with the same uh, setup, uh, I can I can make both um, both uh, product, and with the synchronized uh, view cycling. I mean this is. It, it changed my workflow. It's so that the time I save just from moving from one uh, setup to the other is just, uh, it's crazy. It, for me, it wouldn't made a huge difference. Uh, so um, 
in yellow, this is the, the, the stock. So we start with uh, round stock like this. And um, once, maybe actually, I think I'll just make a simulation quickly. So we, uh, we have a better understanding of what, uh, what's happening. Uh, this will take about a, a minute or so. Okay, here we go. So in blue, uh, this is material we still have to remove. In green means that it's, uh, it's it, these uh, surfaces are uh, are finished. Um, so if I press play, maybe um, accelerate it a bit. So now we're with the same tool. I, I pick a tool and I try to do as much as possible with that first tool and then switch to the next tool. So it's doing all operations, first, third, uh, in, uh, not necessarily in order, uh, just what's most convenient. Now we're doing some uh, 3D with a ball mill. Yeah, Can you see is, that, right? This is really cool because you're, you're kind of talking about doing it in one cycle or whatever. So instead of, like, you, you, you could have a five-axis machine and it would kind of be able to get into all those areas. But with your machine, you're kind of limited to what you can do. But you're That's able right. To, um, sorry, um, you're able to, you know, position these parts so they can get machined on all different sides. And I love the you. you I'm assuming you modeled that table with all the hold downs and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you're registering off of when you load the the parts, and then. Yeah, my actual uh, X Y. Uh... Um, I'll, uh, first, I'll, I'll show that later. There's something uh, first I'd like to show here is one tool path I'm pretty uh, proud of. Um, there's uh, this uh, chamfer um, underneath uh, this part, and I have to get it right here. So um, I uh, modeled um, this uh, tool here with uh, the form tool. Uh, it's uh, over here form mill. Uh, this is a lollipop mill. And check this out. I'm quite proud of this. So at the beginning, it's working with the, the like the bottom half of the sphere. And as it goes up, it's doing the chamfer with the, the top half of the sphere. Wow. In one swift move. <laughs> that pretty is pretty cool. cool. Thinking outside the box, what what tool would you use? That's pretty yeah, cool. yeah, that's right. And um, I'll show you uh, quickly how um, I I made this tool path because uh, it's not that obvious. Uh, okay, now we can see here my X, Y, and Z. I pick uh, this uh, this hole for my uh, X, so I can take off this um, this uh, whole production plate, put a new one for let's say making wheels or other. Uh, product and I just come down with a probe in that hole and touch the walls of the hole and this automatically uh, sets my work coordinates in the in the machine. Um, cool. This is from that hole everything else is uh, is indexed. Yeah. And you can see here inside of uh, my setups I have my two inches, my 1.75. I uh, I put all of my um, uh, my operations uh, in folders by operation. So uh, let's say I'm looking for any operation in the first uh, first up, then I just click on the, the up one folders and I, I can very quickly find the, the, the tool path I, I want to work on or modify or whatever. So uh, this is pretty neat. And the NC programs uh, that came out, uh, Angelo could you know, uh, verify for me, but it's about maybe uh, a year ago or six months ago, something like that. And this, uh, I mean, speeds off my work so much. You can see here that I have uh, all my setups for uh, like all the two inches or the 1.75. And the fact that I'm um, organizing by operations in there, uh, if I want for, say, just to um, machine the first up, um, I have a, a NC program for that. And it's just so fast because all I have to do is check the first, uh, all the, the folders for uh, up one, and I'm good to go. Yeah. So it's 
super fast. The NC programs definitely do speed things up. So. Yeah, very efficient. OK, um, quickly, I'd like to show, oh, there's a, <laughs> while we're still in the, in the chem environment, um, I, I'd like to show these uh, here. Um, I've I've came up with this uh, solution uh, for the first time with this project. <clears throat> I made these sort of tiny um, soft jaws, if you will. Uh, these are pit bull clam, my divide uh, pit bull clamps. They, when you tighten the screw here, they put pressure yeah. and they hold your part with a lot of pressure actually. Uh, and um, this surface, I didn't want it to be um, uh, marked or, you know, uh, damaged in any way so i made these uh tiny uh soft jaws that hinge on this uh thinner uh, material here um and the hinge doesn't really fatigue because you know as soon as you put pressure here uh, it's already um it's not really moving so it's there there's no fatigue and it's been uh holding very well so far it's wow. been, yeah i hadn't I didn't have any parts flying or anything <laughs> bad happened so far. And uh, you see these uh, big gouges here. I'll show you why they're there. It's pretty cool, I think. Um, it's this uh, toolpath here. Simulate. There we go. This is a T-nut mill, a T-slot mill, I mean. And these gouges are just so that the <laughs> the mill could go down here oh. and in a way <laughs> part and come out again. So those <laughs> little pads are actually part of the table. They're not screwed on or anything. No, that's, that's right. That's yeah. cool. That's a good, cool thing. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out uh, so far. Oh. Okay, now just quickly, we have to move on because we, there's so much to look at. Yeah, we could okay. talk for hours, for this, I'm yeah. afraid. <laughs> Sorry? We could probably talk for hours, Blaze. I mean... Yeah, I know, I know. Well, you let me know when uh, <laughs> when that's enough. Okay, so I've made these, uh, um, these sketches. Um, I have that... Um, I'll put it like this. These circles actually are the same, are the exact di diameter of my uh, lollipop mill. Okay. And I uh, projected these two edges um, with an intersect project. Project intersect, yeah, uh, and made these lines from these uh, projected uh, points all the way to the center of uh, the circle, and then I lofted <laughs> the, the 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 triangle part. Okay, you see that, and this here, this edge, can you see it? This edge here is uh, the tracing, uh, is what I picked up for my tracing operation to do the, the yeah. chamfer. So that's what your tool your tool actually follows. Um, yeah. The center of it is on that line, and then it's going to cut that edge. Now, could you not have used just a regular chamfer command, or do you have to do? Because... No, I had to. Uh, the, <clears throat> with uh, four mills, uh, there are some tool paths you cannot use. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't be able to enumerate. Uh, every one of them, but um, yeah. So uh, now I had to come up with, uh, I've, I've been using a technique like that uh, quite a lot with the trace operation to have the tool exactly go where I want it. Um, when it's, uh, it's, there's just no other way. That's yeah. really cool. Um, okay, so uh, I think uh, that's pretty, oh, well, I could show you uh, like um, pictures of, uh, the table, the actual um, CNC, uh, you can see here the round stock. This is before I, I push on the, the start, uh, before I start the cycle. And this is uh, after the cycle. So you see that the first half has been machined here. I can uh, flip this one. So at the end of the cycle, this part here and this part here are finished. They, they're ready. There's nothing else to do uh, other than powder coat them and put them in a box to send to clients. So um, these two parts are finished. So I pull them out. Then I flip this one here, pull this one here. Can you see the, the, the my cursor? Yes, yep. Okay. And then I'll take this one, put it there, take this one, put it there. And at the end, I have like these two uh, places um, empty so that I can put some more round stock and push uh, cycle start again. That's so um, cool process. I, That's really neat. Yeah. 
you can see it uh, working here. <laughs> okay, that'll do. <laughs> Oh, and uh, here's the, just quickly, these little uh, soft jaws. <laughs> okay, so um, I think I'll, can you see me? Yep. Okay. Um, so at the beginning, I said I, I was going to um, to uh, show very different type of projects. So we've seen now uh, machining. Uh, now I'd like to uh, show uh, complete, something completely different. Uh, that I used Fusion for. So back to screen sharing. This uh, is a, a deck I uh, made for uh, my father. <clears throat> um, and uh, fun fact about my father, uh, my father is an, uh, an actor and um, he, uh, <laughs> he played in the movie. If there are any hockey fans here, you might have seen uh, the movie uh, Slapshot. Uh -huh. uh, it's an old movie with uh, Paul Newman. Well, my father is the goalie uh, of the <laughs> That's cool. of the Chiefs. Yeah, and he was in uh, Australia signing <laughs> autographs uh, when I was working on his deck, and I would. That's why I drew um, the the whole uh, house so that he had a better un understanding of what it would look like. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's why I drew the house uh, like pretty quickly, but still. Um, now, if I hide the house, we can see the, the whole deck here. So this was drawn with uh, Fusion uh, maybe about three years ago. Um, and and yeah, I and one interesting thing about this uh, project is that um, well, at the time. Um, the um, 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 I'm looking for the word a derived operation. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't. Uh, they weren't out yet. So uh, uh, my workflow at this time was to uh, have my uh, all my CNC uh, toolpaths in the same project. So you know, if I highlight all of my, uh, you can see all the setups. Oh, yeah. Just as they are in the project, all the handrails and uh, the stairs. And so if uh, I get this out, you can see the toolpaths in there. So I would do all that. I um, have all my parts uh, ready in, uh, in my sh home shop and then move to my uh, father's. Uh, I'll take all of the, the parts already machined and CNC'd and even all these uh, little um, railings were made on on the cnc yeah so i would get there and just assemble the whole thing everything was already cut to length and everything i have uh, some pictures of uh, the real deck here uh, and this is the render i, I love this is one of my favorite pictures where they they match almost exactly the same i think that's <laughs> way way cool and and for for all of you online this is pretty cool that he did it this way because he knows exactly how many pieces of wood he needs to buy. You know, you're not buying extra or or you have to go back to the store because you're four boards short or whatever. And I've shown in one of my live streams, you know, like we did the bathroom. I knew exactly how many tile pieces of tile I need. I knew how many cuts I'd have to make, all that kind of stuff. And the fact that, you know, Blaze was able to model up the designs for his dad, his client, right? <laughs> um, they were able to see what it was going to look like even before they bought a single piece of wood. Yeah. I think that's pretty amazing. Um, actually, uh, the, the next project, um, it shows that again pretty much because uh, this is a turntable I, I made for a client. Um, it's a turntable for photogrammetry to, to like you put an object on it and it turns uh, so many degrees and take a picture. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end, you can assemble this and make a 3D object out of it. And um, yeah, again, I, I could show that to my client. So there's no surprise. They know exactly what they're going to get. Um, and even uh, one of the, the thing, they, they, they wanted uh, the turntable to be able to hold a 20 kilo uh, object on it. And I could even simulate, I, I would put a 20 kilo uh, you know, a force here and know that 
I could tell my client that if you put the 20 kilos on the edge, uh, on the edge, um, you'd have you'd have like less than uh, half a millimeter uh, deflection. Oh wow! <laughs> it's re- reassuring for the, the client who yeah. knows that you know what he got, what he's gonna get is it's gonna work. I can show uh, quickly the insides. You can see the stepper motor and uh, and at my shop where I work, uh, we have um, a water jet cutting machine. So all the parts were water jet cut. And uh, what's the the word for that machine that uh, applies oh, the, the break, uh, sheet metal break? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so uh, we we also have that. So we could have all the par- parts, um, all the sheet metal ready at, at work. And um, yeah, you can see uh, you can see it. Wow. Um, and uh, oh yeah, sure. Just quickly, we have uh, the electronics. Uh, Fusion Electronics wasn't out that uh, then. Uh, it's uh, over a year ago that project. So, uh, but it's unfortunate it would have been <laughs> real nice to have uh, Fusion Electronics back then. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and uh, the thing I'm most proud of about this uh, this project is that <clears throat> it uh, it's there's no uh, welding at all. It's all assembled, so I could once I got my parts, I could assemble this you know uh, easily in a few hours. Um, if I turn on the color cycling, you can see that you know these um, support are sort of uh, jointed, mm-hmm. I could say, and when you uh, Tighten that screw. It it's pulling on that bolt, which is uh, you know putting pressure. So anything, n- nothing moves, and you can see that it's all assembled that way. So um, if the client wants to maybe have a larger uh, turntable, you know we could just very easily just uh, water cut another one and just put it there. Since nothing is welded, it can be easily. Uh, undone and modified or because this is pretty much it's a one-time uh thing and so yeah, we're not going to make uh, 500 of those or if, so it's it will always be a prototype if, if i can say that that way so uh <clears throat> it's it's interesting when you can dis- disassemble and modify it if something goes wrong or i don't know so um but so far it's been working great the electronics, uh, like you can program, uh, let's say you want uh, 36 pictures. So you program it, push the button, and then the table would turn 10 degrees and uh, an infrared uh, LED would send a signal to the camera to take a picture. Wow. That's yeah. Really cool. Um, yeah. For everybody that's watching, if you have any questions for Blaze, um, go ahead and put them in the chat. Angelo's monitoring the, the chat and answering lots of questions. But if, if you want a, a particular question for Blaze, uh, feel free to throw it out there and we'll see if we can get, if we have time for to answer some of those for you. Because stuff like this I think is incredible and it really highlights the power of CAD where you've modeled this whole thing, you know things are going to fit, you know how many pieces, how much material you're going to need. Simulation. You know, yeah. Um, the, you know, now we have ECAD, now we have a range where I showed that last week where you could take all these sheet metal parts and lay them out. Yeah. And it'll arrange them, you know, to yeah. minimize waste, et cetera. But the fact that, I mean, you have all the hardware in here, you're, you're going to have an accurate bills of material, your drawings, everything. And, and you know that everything's going to work and fit together before you actually cut any material. And that's right. I used the McMaster car uh, insert tool yeah. extensively on this project. So at the end, I, I had my bill of material, send this to a McMaster car. And uh, just when I got the box, I just assembled the whole thing. And <laughs> <laughs> no surprises. Huh. Yeah, crazy. And this uh, takes us into uh, robotics. Um, I am a, a mentor uh, in the robot- uh, first robotic um, team. Uh, this is an international competition. I think there is like over 6,000 teams around the world. Um, it's, uh, if you're good at making stuff uh, and you, li- you like uh, spending time with, with uh, kids, uh, I mean, you, you check this out. It, it, it'll change your life. It surely, surely changed mine. Uh, I've been a mentor for five years. I've been teaching uh, Fusion 360 to uh, my teammates. Um, 
I had a class with uh, like 20 students and uh, I did it the uh, well the, the last uh, three years uh, the last year of course uh, was cancelled because of the pandemic but uh, otherwise uh, I, I taught uh, fusion uh, to a class and I made these uh, videos uh, like um, on YouTube on the the team's uh, video channel I think it's in the this yeah, this the description, uh, the description. Okay. yeah yeah um, but they're in French. There are tutorials. There's 10 uh, tutorials. Um, uh, you can check them out if you speak French. Um, so, uh, and okay, the, 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 the competition, you have uh, a new challenge every year and you have to design, build uh, a robot and you have six weeks only to do that. Um, uh, it's a lot of work, but a lot of fun and i'll show you uh, the last uh, three robots we uh, we've designed uh, how are we uh, in time oh, we're time? fine don't, don't we're worry fine. okay yeah okay excellent we're probably um, got, i mean it's about six minutes to the top of the hour but we, we usually go over on my live streams anyway so I, nobody will be okay. shocked <laughs> so. all right so uh this uh, robot uh, we did uh, in 2017 uh, i'll show you a quick video uh, of what it looks like uh, the first, uh, I'll take the volume down a bit. Um, the first 15 seconds is uh, autonomous mode. So uh, right now the driver is not uh, driving the, the the robot. The robot is doing itself uh, its stuff by itself. And now the the, the driver just uh, took uh, command of the the, the robot. Uh, we have to go all the way at the other end of the field and pick up uh, these big uh, plastic gears. There you go. <laughs> And then we have to place uh, these uh, these gears on hooks, and you see the cam the 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 the, the, the turret there uh, has um, uh, vision, so it always tracks the the the. the. And at the end of the game, uh, we are climbing up a rope. So <laughs> this <Really>? is the. <laughs> Holy cow! So you had to make the robot climb a rope. Yeah, that's amazing. So, uh, <laughs> so quickly, uh, you can see here the the the, the turret. Uh, there's a Raspberry Pi in there with the Raspberry Pi camera. This is the um, the flywheel uh, that throws the the balls into a, a basket with ballistics. So it was a pretty uh, hard challenge, really. Uh, these uh, are like the sort of the basket jaws that uh, hold the, the 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 gear, so the gear would fall in there and finds its place. Wow. Uh, this would pick up uh, the, the yellow balls on the, on the terrain and pull them in. Uh, and this is uh, what we use to climb up the, the, the rope at the end. <laughs> and it, it uses uh, mechanism wheels so that it can move uh, sideways and, uh, and so on. Six weeks to build that and, and practice and uh, now the next robot is really the ro my favorite my personal favorite um i love that robot this uh, this whole uh, thing here can move up and down the rails here and uh and it can pivot 180 degrees and the clamp uh, can um with this uh Hair uh, is that piston the name in is that a word in English? Yes, piston. Yeah. That hair piston would push uh, the the whole uh, arm ass arm assembly uh, out for uh, an uh, additional foot, and of course these clamp would open and close. And even at the end, uh, it would uh, use these uh, hooks to um, lift itself up at at the end of the game, which would you know give some more points. And the, 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 um, what the robot has to do is pick up milk crates and put them in scales. And if you have the scales tilting your way, uh, then you, you make the points. And, you know, um, I'll show you, uh, this is, um, I'll show you a video of um, the autonomous mode. Uh, we were practicing the autonomous mode. This is my son, by the way, you can see in the background. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> I'm going to have to show my son this. He, he did first robotics last year. 
And but yeah, so similar challenges. They have to pick up certain colored balls and put them way up high into a tube all right. and all this kind of stuff. And he'll he'll enjoy this one. How cool is that robot? Yeah. <laughs> really, uh, uh, it was really uh, fun to watch, and we had a lot of success with it too. Um, this is the last robot I'll show you uh, today. Um, this uh, this robot was the smallest, the most compact we ever did. Um, I think it'll be easier to explain if you see the video first. Uh, this is uh, our pilot uh, practicing. It had to uh, place, pick up, and place uh, these uh, this discs. And you see that the disc is turning. This is just for show. The disc is turning, but it's, it has no purpose. It's just for <laughs> it's just for show. And you can see how compliant it is. Um, that. The uh, compliance um, is actually whoops, uh, not that easy uh, to uh, to make. Uh, it was quite a challenge, really. Uh, but we we uh, so that the, the robot doesn't have to be perfectly centered uh, on the disc. You know, it could be a bit sideways, and the thing would just grab the disc anyway. Okay. So. Um, yeah, this is where most of the work uh, was done. These would slide on these rails, and uh, these are polycarbonate, which is, you know, it can take a quite a quite a beating. Uh, so these would flex um, if you like. If you put pressure on this side of the, we'll call it the head or the end effector. If you push uh, on this side, these would flex, and this would move back while this one might just not stay there uh they, they have uh, constant force springs that pull them uh, always to the front of the robot and um uh, these parts here would you know they're on this, they have this spring so when the disc comes in it pushes this this one can move in and um so that passively you know the, the the pilot all the pilot had to do is just like throw himself at the disc and it would grab it wow. and when you, when you want to release it this uh, little motor would uh would pull on this part so that the the, the bolt here would push this uh, this thing that the, the the hooks would come in and the disc would be able to come out and you can see here all the limit switches uh, to know uh, the position of the part and so on and uh, these uh, two little uh, limit switches send a signal to this servo motor that would pull its that spindle up, which made the the, the disc turn. Uh -huh. yeah. No other purpose than just being cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, Blaze, I did have a couple of questions come in. So, okay. um, so Peter actually asked, um, can Blaze do a future live stream on just on the robotic building? Like, how did you go about? you know, designing and building these robots, which I think is such a great idea. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but, um, <laughs> you know, I know Fusion use, is used quite a bit in some of the fighting robots that you see on the, like, Discovery Channel and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually worked with a team um, uh, here in Loveland where uh, they used Fusion and, and had one of the robots. So uh, maybe I could see if I could get them to talk too. Um, so Vital asked a question, how long did it take you to model that turntable, the, the photogrammetry turntable? Oh, right. Well, uh, it's been over a year ago, so I don't really remember, but maybe, I don't know, uh, the, the most of it would have been drawn within uh, maybe a day or a few hours or something, and uh, really to go into the details and everything, uh, three, four days, something like that. I don't know. That's pretty, pretty cool. And, and these robots also, I mean, really, again, reiterate what I just said earlier, where you know that all the parts are going to fit. Can you, I know, if, for example, in First Robotics, some of the robots have to be a certain size. They can't be too large. And the That's only right. reason I know that is my son's robot got disqualified because it was one nut too wide. It didn't fit, uh -oh. you know, because they had a, a bolt sticking out or a nut sticking out too far. Right. Um, so the fact that you can the visualize weight. everything is is amazing. Yeah. They have, you even have weight limits. Yep. Like it has to be below 120 pounds or something like that. So you can uh, you can actually um, um, get the um, properties of each one of your parts and know beforehand pretty much how much your uh, your robot is going to weigh if you think you might be uh, 
<laughs> close to the limit. Right. Yeah. Um, the, maybe the the last project I will uh, show today is also uh, work I've done with uh, my robotics uh, team. It's a, a swerve wheel we're work, working on. Um, this is <laughs> this I'm pretty uh, proud of. Uh, one thing I'd like to say uh, before going further, uh, I'm not drawing this back home by myself. I have kids uh, with me, and I, you know, I tell them, okay, maybe you could uh, draw this part or work on this, and uh, so. Uh, the, the 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 kids that I've been showing fusion are now you know really good at uh, at using fusion so I'm I'm not alone um, so this is a really a team effort um, so this is uh, a swerve wheel uh, swerve wheels uh, can rotate uh, indefinitely uh, this way there's a slip ring here so that the the, the wires uh, keep their connection. Um, even though this uh, can turn uh, indefinitely, yeah. Uh, this is the motor that uh, actuates uh, this pulley here, um, and um, maybe I should I could show uh, the analysis. Okay, here you have the center of mass, which has to be pretty much centered. So we had this, you know. There, there were, there's a lot of lot to uh, think about when you uh, <laughs> when you make something like this. Um, so we managed to, uh, you know, count, balance uh, the the parts so that the center of mass would be pretty much in the center. And um, if I show a section analysis, uh, um, I'll actually I'll just edit this and hide the hatching. I think we, we can see better. Um, yeah, so the, 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 the actual motor that, uh, that makes the wheel itself uh, move is inside the wheel. That is the motor here. Um, and you can see it's pretty jam-packed. There's a bearing here and a bearing here and all the parts. Um, and so the, the motor would actuate these pulleys, uh, which have a shaft going all the way on the other side. And these would actuate this larger pulley, which is uh, attached to the wheel. So this is how the wheel is turning. And we have all, our, all of our uh, gearing down uh, and stuff. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is the last project. I, I just realized that uh, there was another tutorial I wanted to uh, put in there and I just forgot. So uh, maybe a next time. <laughs> well, so, so Blaze, to kind of wrap things up here, I've got some observations. So um, this is for everybody listening in. Notice how organized um, Blaze's, uh, you know, naming, every part has a name, you know, yeah. the power transmission assembly, the, you know, the main bearing retainer, et cetera. Please, please, yeah. please name your parts, name your assemblies, organize things. And you can see you can create incredibly complex assemblies that work and rotate together. Um, you know, if you take the time to, to organize things and name things. And, and that's one of the things I've noticed with almost every single one of your um, things you've shown today is just everything is organized and everything has a name. So awesome job on that. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Yep. Especially when you're working with a team. Uh, uh, I, I can't wait to try um, that workflow with the um, edit in place. Yeah. Um, next uh, on the next robot, uh, we're gonna we'll be using this extensively. Uh, we didn't have that on the last robots, so uh, it does get a bit messy because there is a whole team and you know like right. like uh, secondary high school kids that you know that help. So uh, can <laughs> it can get a bit disorganized. Uh, but still, we, we try to uh, keep it organized uh, with uh, the robots and, you know, the, the browser because otherwise it just gets very messy and it's hard to find the parts. So. Yeah. And then I also noticed, you know, you're you're using the tools that you have, for example, McMaster Car, bringing in, you know, nuts and bolts and washers and electrical components and et cetera. I love your yeah. wire routing through the plastic tubes and you can actually yeah, see right. the wires. I think that's really kind of cool. Yeah. But then I don't just, do that like, all the time, but this is just like for to have a cool render. Right. Uh, 
it's worth it yeah well and then even just the colorization of your models you know you can kind of see what is what just by colorizing instead of everything is some plain gray the fact that you you know kind of anodized um yeah. you know, each of these parts and stuff other That's thing right. I want to say is thank you so much for helping out with the first robotics. I, I also teach fusion to high school students and also teach robotics. Um, so um, I really appreciate you doing that. And, you know, you're helping the future engineers um, learn the tools that they have, you know, access to and then get to do some pretty cool things. So it's so a thumbs up for that. I really do appreciate you doing that. So, um, I don't see any um, more questions that came through. Uh, I, I know I'm going to rewatch this one because I'm just blown away with all the stuff that, that Blaze has been doing. Um, the reason I wanted him to show off his stuff is so you can kind of see, you know, when I do a live stream, I create a bracket or a flagpole mount or whatever. And here you're actually seeing Fusion being used for actual products um, that, that, you know, the fact that he you know, made a CNC machine that made parts for its own CNC machine. You know, I think that's really cool. The ECAD, um, you know, the fact that he's Blaze is making his own um, circuit boards and all kind of stuff. You can do, you can make anything with Fusion. So that's right. Blaze, thank you so much. Um, we're just a little it's bit over, that. so I kind of want to wrap this up. If there's anything you want to say. Um, well, again, it's been uh, really a, an honor uh, that you uh, invited me, and uh, I mean, uh, I'm 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 really happy that I could uh, show uh, <laughs> show my stuff being on this side of the live stream for the first time. <laughs> yeah, and with that said, in the description of this live stream in the YouTube video, there's a lot of links that Blaze provided that show his first robotics team, his Instagram page, etc. Um, I think there's a, bl a blog Autodesk did for on um, Blaze a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, really I know. Cool write up. So yeah, it's I highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, again, Blaze, thank you so much. Angelo, thanks for helping out um, on the keyboard. Angelo. And we will see you on our next live stream. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Bye everyone. Okay. That was awesome. <clears throat>